I am one of the assistant directors of admissions and recruitment. And I want to start off with saying congratulations. Uh, I'd love to welcome you to the uh, Muse Scholar family. I just want to let you know this was definitely a competitive year for Hunter admissions um, and especially competitive um, for our uh, Muse Scholar selection. So uh, you should be very proud of yourselves. Um, you know, of course, we'd love to see you um, in person. Um, so in order for us to sort of do our version of that, um, we definitely encourage you guys to um, turn on your cameras. We're on meeting mode because it's a great opportunity for us to be able to see your faces and connect with each other. Um, this ne next hour is going to be a great opportunity for you to learn about the MU Scholar Program, hear from our students from this cohort. Um, I know you guys are going to have some questions. Um, I definitely encourage you to ask your questions live. Um, and uh, I would wait till the live Q&A at the end to ask your questions. If you're maybe a little shy and don't wanna ask your questions live, uh, you're more than welcome to use the chat feature. Uh, so in the chat feature, uh, just ask your question and we'll make sure to answer it um, live um, as well for you. So without further ado, um, I'd love to introduce um, our director of the program, Ms. Dara Meyer, Myers Kingley. Gary, you're on mute. I got it, I got it. I was following your directions, Alfred. Um, hello, Muse Scholar admittees. I know um, some of you have committed, some of you have deposited, some of you are trying to figure out whether this program and this school is right for you. Um, I hope that after today, you feel inspired and wanna join, as Alfred said, the Muse Scholar family. We have members of that family in the Zoom room today, um, and I'll introduce them in a moment. Uh, just a little bit about who I am. Um, I'm the person that read all your applications, guys. Um, I'm the one. I'm the one who said, from whatever it was, some magic little details about you, whether it was what you oh, were on. It's just oopsie. Somebody is not muted. But I didn't know if she would wear them. Christine, I think. Yeah, well, Christine well, Romero, do you mind muting? Thank you so much. Okay, so I'm Dara Myers Kingsley, and I'm the director of the Muse Scholar Program. I actually wear two other hats, um, which when you join Hunter, you will know um, I'm your uh, all the Muse's faculty mentors um, for all four years. So we have two seniors and a junior muse um, who are gonna talk to you on a panel in a few minutes. Um, so I am their mentor after freshman year. And in freshman year, I'm your professor in a year long course uh, where we study all the arts together. Um, and that has included in the past, of course, pre-pandemic, going to museums, going to the theater, going to listen to music and go to dance performances, sort of everything. This year obviously was a very different year. I know you guys being seniors in high school and juniors last year, right, have had your experience of online learning. Um, just so you know, the muses have still remained really happy, um, very immersed in the arts this year with, um, with the challenges that we've had. Um, so, that I'm gonna do a little PowerPoint that gives you a little more insight into the program. But before I do that, let me introduce some other folks that are in the room. Um, Emily Boxenbaum is here with me. Um, she is the assistant and uh, to the MUSE program and also a graduate student um, just finishing up in our education graduate school uh, to become an art teacher. Some of you may have some favorite art teachers that you just studied with, and Emily is planning to be um, in that next um, next group of, of teachers in the New York City High School uh, programs. Um, I have my colleague, Joel Jimenez, who is here. Um, he's head of advising um, he, for the honors students. So he's the person that all of you guys would work with to figure out your academic plan, your academic schedule, and um, 
all kinds of questions go to uh, Dr. Jimenez. So thank you for being here today. He'll be able to answer some of the questions you may have around academics. Um, and then you met Alfred from admissions, um, who does all the, you know, all the work behind uh, your applications and as you submit and deposit and all that jazz and great colleague. Um, as well, I have three Muse scholars. Um, my two seniors who are about to graduate at the end of this journey, um, Ariel Zirin, who will introduce herself and talk to you a bit about her experience. Rosette Sullis, who is graduating also in a month and a half. Um, and Colin Casey, who is a junior and he's in front of that theater, our theater building uh, sign, who's a theater, a theater major, and we'll talk about that as well. Okay, so that's who we are. Um, I think we'll turn, Emily, if you don't mind getting our little PowerPoint up, spend a couple of minutes in our little news world. Okay. We just tested it and it works fine. <laughs> Taking a minute to load. <laughs> All right. Oh, that Wi-Fi in Brooklyn. Yeah. I'm actually on my 4G so that this oh, wouldn't okay. happen. Let me give okay. this another try. Hold on. Hey, show of hands, how many how many Brooklynites are like hit the raise hand button? How many Brooklynites in this uh, in this Zoom room? Got any folks from Brooklyn? Ah, oh, I see a few. Okay, cool. We got Brooklyn, we got Queens, we got Long Island, we got Staten Island. We got Westchester, cool. Okay, so we always ask the question, what is a muse? And this beautiful uh, logo was created um, by a muse now graduate, um, Ariel Budnick. Um, and as you know, uh, muses are students who are uh, passionate about the arts. We go to the next slide. Where's our picture? Okay, well, we have a really great picture that goes with this little piece of text. Um, there we go. Okay, so um, Amuse, um, as you may all know, right, is an honor student who's part of a small cohort of high achieving students, right? You guys are all honor students who have a passion for the creative arts. Um, you know, Hunter is a huge school, right? There are 20,000 undergrads at Hunter. And um, the reason that our honors programs were created was in order to create these smaller communities so that students could um, make community with each other, make friendships and find sort of a home, have people like myself, Dr. Jimenez, and um, my assistant, Emily, and others who work for the MUSE program who care about you and who pay attention to you and who answer your questions and help you get internships and help you get jobs and help you go to grad school and you know help you decide what you're majoring in if those are questions that you're having. So we're really here to support your journey um, while you're at Hunter College. And what you're seeing on this slide um, sorry, um, if you go back, it, you can see it says the Zankel Arts Hub. This is a brand new space that just opened in late January, 2020. Um, we waited four years for it to be built. It has this beautiful big open space with great chairs for students to hang out with. And um, unfortunately we were there for about six weeks or so and then haven't been back since. So we, we can't wait to get back. Our offices are in this space and it's a great place for students to come and uh, connect with each other, hang out, eat a snack, do your homework. Okay. So as I mentioned, um, what do you guys get as part of your support system, right? You get um, me, 
lucky you, um, as your director and your faculty mentor um, for all four years. You get academic advisors, as I mentioned, uh, Dr. Jimenez is with us today, and also Elizabeth Wall O'Brien, who helped support the muses. Um, a photo on the left is a group of us out on the uh, bridges or decks of the Whitney Museum. Um, so a little example of where we've been, where we can't wait to go back to. Next slide. Um, so the muses take classes together freshman year. I'm gonna go over what that academic plan is for freshman year, first year. Uh, just a little glimpse of some things that we did in this last year during the pandemic. Um, classes were on Zoom, um, and, but we also met outside. Um, we're on the steps of the Met Museum. Um, and we took a walk, you know, socially distanced and masked um, uh, to talk about the various museums on Museum Mile without going inside. And I'm also going out in a few weeks with the uh, freshman users this spring um, into Central Park for one of our last um, get togethers before the end of the semester. So I'm working on the plans for getting us out and about a bit next year as well. Thank you. Okay, so what is um, expected of you when you come first thing next fall? Um, number one on this sheet, and I believe you were sent this, um, Dr. Jimenez can, can, can confirm with me or for me that um, you got a packet that tells you these things, but um, the HUM 201, that first course on this list is the class that you um, would take just with new scholars, just with the first year muses. It's a Wednesday morning, it's nice and long, two and a half hours, gives us a lot of chance to either be out and about or um, doing, um, having guest speakers, doing creative uh, projects in the class time. Um, and that's really one of the, the key courses that you have. There's also a mandatory English class um, either the first level English 120, which all Hunter students must take, or again, depending on AP and other uh, pre-college courses. Um, and again, Dr. Jimenez would help you with that. You would then take English 220. I ask all freshman muses to take one of the following arts introductory courses. Right, an art history course, a music course, a dance course, a film, you get to choose um, from this, um, this nice list, um, either because you're thinking of majoring in one of those uh, departments and wanna get the first prereq out of the way so you can go on to, if you're a studio art major, you can go on from the foundations class and take drawing or take photography or take sculpture. Um, or it's also the opportunity to take a class that you've, for an art form you've never studied. Maybe you're curious about film. Maybe you, you know, want to learn about the history of theater. So it gives you that opportunity. That's number three. Number four is a first year seminar. Um, it's just a little under an hour that um, all uh, freshmen honor students take with their cohort. So you would be in a class with other muses for number four. So number one and number four, you're definitely with your freshman classmates. Um, obviously, as you go into whichever of those intro arts classes, you're gonna you know, be in a class with other Hunter students. Um, number five is a math requirement. Um, and then number six, you get to choose any class um, you know, basically as an elective. So that's what your fall will look like. Um, this spring, you can see in the red, you take um, one more time, a continuation of the freshman class. And it's now called the Muse Scholar Seminar, um, again with the Muses. And the rest of your academic program in spring of freshman year is up to you. So really it's that freshman fall where you kind of really get to know your classmates and the students who are in your sort of class of 2025 um, Muse family. 
Okay, and if you have questions, we'll, we'll address those in a few minutes. Okay, um, right, so as I mentioned, we go out and about um, to experience music, dance, theater, and exhibitions together. Go on. Um, muses also have a chance to do two particular um, forms of expressing themselves with the entire cohort. In other words, muses freshmen through seniors. And um, that's for everybody, all about 120 muses at the school at one time. So we have a performing arts showcase. And again, this is optional, but many students participate either in producing this event or um, doing the PR for it or actually performing. Um, and the students create the program and produce it. And it's you know just a great opportunity because actually um, it's not always uh, evident what each of your um, artistic talents are. So we may know that you're a music major, but how would we get to hear you play? And this is one of the places where, um, you know, we get to see all the talents that each of you has uh, to share. Okay, next. And for those of you who are visual artists, we have, um, an exhibition program called Activating the Urban Campus, which is a campus-wide exhibition of art throughout Hunter. Uh, last year, obviously, we did that exhibition online. Um, and hopefully by next spring, we'll be back on the walls of Hunter College. Great. Uh, I know, because I've seen all your applications that some of you are very clearly um, coming into Hunter with uh, the desire to have a major in one of the arts disciplines, theater or music or art or media. Um, but you should know that you can major in any, you know, any discipline that you choose. Uh, most muses have at least um, a minor usually in one of the arts or a double major or they find other ways to participate in the arts while they're at school, whether that's being in the symphony orchestra or being in one of the theater performances. There are lots of ways to participate in the arts beyond um, the study of the arts at Hunter. A couple of really great things that our muses have gone on to or done, and this is just a tiny little sample. Um, Jim Aplato had a great internship at Atlantic Records. Uh, Reagan Gordon actually performed in a professional performance at Fall for Dance, which is at New York City Center. Um, Isa Tuba had an internship at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I do know she's now working for Viacom after graduating. Um, and Colleen Cash is now the director of auctions at Artnet after interning at Sotheby's and Christie's, and now she has this huge, incredible job. So just a little reminder of what it is that you, um, the benefits um, of being a Muse Scholar, right? You get a financial award, um, which you know may include a housing compensation this year. Um, you get priority course registration, meaning that before the giant student population registers for classes, you guys get a few days to register before anyone else. Um, you get priority access to a dorm. You get this special curriculum, like I mentioned, and mentoring, like I mentioned, and access to theater, dance, et cetera, through the MUSE program. And then you get that first year seminar um, that just the honor students get. And maybe we can just, well, I think you guys probably all know we have a Muse website. Is it possible to go there and then back to the last slide? So if you haven't yet, I would um, 
highly recommend that you um, find a few minutes, you know, to scroll around in our Muse Scholar website. Um, we have all kinds of sections related to the benefits, to the curriculum, to uh, the opportunities for Muses, for, um, you know, other things that you might want to know about, internships and jobs, et cetera. Um, so I just want to remind you that that, that beautiful website exists um, for you to take a look at. Okay, and I think my last slide is only, we hope you join us. Yeah, next fall. Okay, so we're gonna switch now to the, um, the student panel. Um, and um, each of my wonderful new scholars is going to talk to you about their experience. Um, so let's start with the seniors. Um, Rosette, are you ready to rock and roll? Yeah, I'm good to go. Okay. Um, so hi, I'm Rosette. I'm in my last semester and I'm part of the Muse program. I've been part of it since freshman and I really, um, it's one of the things that I look back on and I'm really glad that I applied as a high school senior. Um, I think logistically, like the, the priority registration is, has been helpful every single semester that I've been at Hunter. I've been able to get all the classes that I want. Um, and also just the advising and having someone that has known you for all four years and is able to like track your progress. Um, I know I, I just met with Professor Myers Kingsley like this week and I, she was so helpful with like advice and connecting me to other muses. So you really get that personal support that you might not get otherwise. Um, and I think the program itself has, introduced me to a lot of art forms that I had never considered before. I came into Muse um, interested in theater and dance because that's what I had done prior. And I, I found myself like taking a music class at some point in my junior year because I was like, oh, I really liked that show that we went to freshman year and I want to take more classes about it. And I got, as, as someone who's been born and raised in New York, there was places that we went to that I never would have went to on my own accord, like the Roundabout Theater, um, the Joyce Theater to see a dance performance. Those are things I never would have done. And being able to go there with people that I see um, for most of my freshman year, it helps you make friends. As a commuter school, it's hard to make connections if you don't mm -hmm. share the same classes with people consistently. And I made some of my best friends at Hunter through the Muse program, which I'm always especially grateful for. And you don't even have to major in the art, like um, Professor said in the, in the slides, I'm majoring in sociology and anthropology, but I still like to find ways to incorporate any aspects of art into that. Thank you, Rosette. Great. Uh, Arielle. Hi guys, I'm Ario. Um, I am a, a senior also. I am a film major and a sociology minor. Um, and I wanted to talk about like the people at Muse being sort of like the highlight of my experience. I cannot stress this enough. Like they were hand selected the greatest group of people. Um, and at Hunter, it's a commuter school. So it's definitely really hard to make connections with people. But when you're in Muse, it's like a built-in community. And besides for being a community at Hunter, it's like, was my community in New York City? Like I'm from Long Island. So this was my induction into Manhattan and going out every Tuesday night with them and getting to sort of bond over art and like realize that we all like the same things. It became the people that I went to lunch with, the people that I rode the subway with, the people that I go to the movies with, like my community at Muse was like the foundation for why I had such a great experience at Hunter. And besides the fact that they were just like good friends, also, they were my network. Like I got multiple internships because people in the Muse program, like Jimmy Plato literally signed me up for an internship one time and I did it and it was awesome. And like another, another Muse, James Riley was talking about one of his internships and I was like, oh, that sounds great. And he's like, here's the phone number, call the guy. And like those foundational experiences then led to me being able to get internships at places like Jimmy Fallon and Stephen Colbert and PBS Kids and like that was all because of the people at the Muse. Like I could not, I cannot stress that enough. And I think the fact that we had like Dara took us to like all like amazing places all over New York City. 
on Thursdays, on Tuesday nights. That was like the highlight of my week every single week. Um, and we used to joke that it, it was hard to, it's easy for us because we get to connect over music and TV and movies, but it must be really hard for like the chemistry people to bond over like covalent bonds. Like there's, there's something so inherently awesome about like what we all love and it really brought us together. And I thought that was so incredible. And having people also who get to mentor you, like I've been able to meet through like connections from Dara and Emily and everybody like getting to meet old um, muses who are now in the industries that I wanna be in and like helping me, teaching me where I need to go and how to get there. And that's been like so incredible and so helpful. Um, and just overall, I think the Muse program is like such a platform for how to get around at Hunter and like what you wanna do and where you wanna be. I know I wanted to be a theater major and I switched mainly because I just loved the muses that were in the film department. And I loved like going into my classes at the beginning of every semester and seeing which muses were there. Like it was just a piece of Hunter that could be everywhere I wanted to go even though the school was so big sometimes and is so lonely. I feel like the muse program is really like your opportunity to feel at home somewhere and to really have a community. Thank you, Ariel. Do you want to mention what um, what you performed on, um, in your freshman year showcase, the performing show? Absolutely. So I am a film major and I don't do music really, but I have a little hobby that I love to rewrite different, uh, I guess, Hamilton musical numbers. And I did one for a muse project and I just had so much fun doing it. So I decided that for the showcase, I was going to do a rap about Ruth Bader Ginsburg to the tune of Alexander Hamilton. And I dressed up as her and I just like had such a great time working on that with everyone, but also getting to perform, I guess, in art form that I don't usually have a platform for. So that was awesome. Thanks for sharing that. And speaking of performing artists, um, Colin, Casey. Hi, I'm Colin. Um, to give some context on myself, uh, I'm double majoring in theater and creative writing with a minor in history because I love degrees and hate sleep. Um, and two words that I can assign to uh, like the Muse program, as everyone's been saying so far, is a uh, community and opportunity. Um, and community, like first of all, just in terms of like your fellow muses, um, I. I have my, my, my tightest group of friends from uh, Hunter are muses. We talk, we have like multiple group chats on different platforms. Um, and we often collaborate on artistic projects, especially theater muses, which um, at this point, the theater department and the muse program, if there was a Venn diagram, it'd be a circle. Uh, it's, there's so many muses in theater right now. Um, and it spans like different generations of muses. I, I have friends uh, very close friends who are muses and weren't in the same year as me, uh, like Patrick and uh, Monica. I'm very close with both of them. Um, but beyond like this sense of community, there's also like literally, there's a lot of opportunity that comes with being a muse. Um, I, I got accepted into the Thomas Hunter Arnas program. I am doing a Mellon Public Humanities Fellowship. Um, I don't want to sound like I'm bragging. I am, but I don't want to sound like that. Um, but yeah, there's just, there's just so much stuff you can do as a muse. Um, and honestly, we're, we're sort of each other's resources. We're in for each other. We help each other when we need to. Um, and Dara or Professor Myers Kingsley is uh, a wonderful resource that I've used multiple times and I hope I will be able to continue to. Thank you, Colin and Ariel and Rosette. Okay, um, I think it's time now for our Q and A. Um, I believe Alfred is going to moderate that for us. So hopefully, we just gave you right a little bit of an overview of the Muse program, a little taste of how it feels from the students, um, and we would love to know what you want to know. What 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 questions can we answer for you? Um, and, and please don't be shy. All right, so I actually have some questions over here. Um, our first question is, um, freshman seminar was mentioned. Um, so what do 
healthy uh, sophomores and upperclassmen do? Um, I can answer that, or uh, Dr. Jimenez, would you like to answer what happens as of sophomore year and beyond? Oh, uh, sure. I, um, so we start with a very sort of um, long orientation in the first semester, if you will, um, to really orientate you to all, all that's available at Hunter and to start connecting you um, to the right um, supports and, and you know your, your community. Um, beyond the first year, um, you then, at, I mean, in, in, um, Professor Myers Kingsley can, can talk more about the music specific events, but basically what we do is really like to get you um, to immerse yourself somewhere, whether it's um, in the arts or scholarship opportunity or um, in your major. Really, I would say the sophomore year is sort of your year of exploration where you go beyond reading about things and, and really starting to put yourself into those things. And then in your junior year, you're sort of solidifying that exploration and um, in, in a lot of ways starting to actually give back to others who are new to Hunter and trying to pull them into those you know, opportunities, if you will. And then in the senior year, and I'm oversimplifying, um, but in the senior year, that's where you're really kind of like, wrapping things up and thinking about what's what's your next move, whether it's graduate school, um, employment, or you know, a combination of the of the two. Joel, do you maybe want to mention um, something about the general education requirements? I mean, just a little more of maybe the the overall, you know, academic uh, calendar or or requirements of any hunter student. Yeah, sure, sure. So where your first semester starts um, pretty defined in terms of taking like the Intro to Hume course, the first year seminar, English composition, beyond the first semester, you have a lot more flexibility to, to essentially choose your own schedule. But you do that in consultation with us in terms of um, we're going to be by your side giving you um, lots of support with planning and giving you the right tools. So one of the tools we give you is a four-year sort of big spreadsheet, if you will, where we help you map out all the general education requirements. So you need things like uh, English composition one and two. Um, there are two science courses you need, a math. We're going to discuss like all those general education requirements at our um, like registration overview. And, and towards the end of May, and you'll get information of, you'll get an, a, a formal invitation to that after May 1st. But um, there is, yeah, there's a general education sort of curriculum that everyone needs to take. And then uh, the first semester you take like an intro course, um, you know, for, for, for you all, it's, it's sort of in an area um, in the arts, but you, you're going to be in very good hands. So you're not going to be alone. And I think that's what's most important. There's a lot of information. There's a lot of choices to make, but we're right with you from day zero <laughs> till the end. And I think that's what really makes a difference here. That we don't have to like tell you everything right now and say, oh, well, we told you, you know, no, we're, we're going to take a step by step and, you know, you're, you're in really good hands. Maybe, maybe another um, just sort of overarching concept to share is that when you're a Muse scholar, you're a Muse as a kind of identifier for all four years. And academically, right, to stay a Muse, you need to keep a 3.0 to keep your scholarship and some of your other benefits. But that being a Muse doesn't mean that you have to be a theater major, right? It's you probably will be, or you may, you know, perform in some way or do something artsy because most muses do, but it doesn't mandate you. Okay. I just want to, it's really about a community and you come in as the smart, artsy, creative folks, you guys, and you develop your um, expertise in college, find your path um, and you know, again, identify as a Muse scholar. Um, and I think what Colin was also talking about, the Thomas Hunter Honors Program, 
That's open to all Hunter students um, who have a certain GPA and interest in interdisciplinary study. So that allows students to kind of explore in yet another way at Hunter. Um, you don't have to be a muse, but a lot of muses, because again, you guys are high achieving and you want double and triple majors and you want to study the relationship between, you know, history and writing and theater and whatever. Um, and the fellowship that he mentioned um, at the Public Humanities, there are a number of different fellowships, again, for all Hunter students. And because uh, the honor students tend to be, right, um, folks who are looking for the next opportunity, some of those have money attached to them uh, along with the research or have internship opportunities that are paid. So there are lots of ways to grow um, as a student, as a young scholar, as an artist at Hunter. Um, but again, the MUSE, not to, to confuse you, right, the MUSE program is really your sort of home base, who you are, but then you go on to study in your major and you have, you know, colleagues, friends, advisors, even in the major. Is that correct, Ariel and Rosette and Colin? Do you wanna maybe answer the, a little bit of that advisor piece um, as well? Yeah, so I've, I've actually heavily relied on like scholar advising, I feel like that's been the mm -hmm. most helpful. I know like Dr. Menace has been like answering like emails when I'm like in a panicked mode and I'm like, I need to know this. Um, but with your majors, you usually will have like one or two advisors that you can choose from um, and you, but they really only answer questions in particular to that major. So like um, sociology internships or um, this is the class you need to take for the anthro major. So um, you get more of a general, like what to do at Hunter advising from the scholar's office. Mm -hmm. Right. So we're the, we're the big picture, you know, guiding you through the whole four years in any way, shape or form. And then you have your pockets of places that you focus. I hope that that helps a little bit with what does it mean for being a muse. Okay, next question. Excellent. So this is a, a question for our, our our students. Um, I'll start off with Rosette. Um, how has Muse Scholars helped you adjust to the new virtual world? Um, it's been really cool. I think I did a, an arts kind of internship online virtually that I got through Hunter um, over the summer last year. And it was it had to do with um, providing arts education to children with cancer. And so I think having a working knowledge of everything I learned about different forms of art in Muse made me able to communicate with different artists in that internship because it wasn't like I didn't know what they were talking about or like they were talking about different dance forms or different um, visual arts that they were doing. Um, and I wasn't completely lost. I was able to actually communicate and keep up with the pace of communicating with artists. And it's, it's been really helpful. <laughs> That's wonderful. Um, I'd love to hear from my other two uh, lovely uh, MUSE students. So, Ariel? Yeah, for me, I think the greatest thing about MUSE in the virtual world is I know that in the virtual classes, it's kind of hard to make like deep personal connections sometimes with people, especially if you know they're only going to be around for the semester. And so I feel like I relied a lot more on my MUSE friends in these virtual classes. Sometimes if I missed something or if I needed someone to tell me what the assignment was, I go straight to my MUSE people because I know them and I can trust them and there is like a connection there. And I think in addition to that, um, being in the city throughout like the pandemic, a, a big piece of knowing, I guess, you can't really go to a Broadway show or you can't really go to a museum per se, but having like that foundation of like knowing where things are and what could be going on outside. And I get like emails all the times from like the muse of like arts going on in the city. And like, if there's something to walk through outside that gives me what to do. And I know a lot of us are bored these days. So that's definitely been helpful. Excellent, excellent. Colin? Um, yeah, I don't know if I have anything specific uh, to say that hasn't already been said, but yeah, I, I is going to be surprising. I think of a lot of life like theater. Um, I, I do think that like theater, um, virtual classrooms in our environment is very collaborative. 
because kind of none of us knew what we were doing. Like if if you don't remember, like uh, probably like fir- first time you came back to class once, like right after lockdown, no no one knew what was happening. What is Zoom? How do you do this? How do you do that? Like both uh, instructors and students were asking that. So just like ha- having this sort of knowledge of how to problem solve together, uh, which I got from Muse helped me with that. Alfred, I'm, I'm happy to answer a, cu- a couple of questions about the online world, both sure. for the classroom and, and experiencing the art during this online period. Um, I would say in our in terms of the freshman muse classroom, we still have evenings that we call outings. I mean, we have one tonight where we attend a, a live stream together. We watch theater together. We've watched film together. We watch tonight. We're going to a concert with um, a story being read by a major writer interspersed with music. So we still come together at night. And then we talk before and we talk after. It's as if we were in the theater lobby, if you will. You know, and this is in addition, obviously, to the class period where we discuss that art form or that artist or, you know, all the things that go with it. Um, And so we've been able to still create um, a sense of doing something special at night um, a number of times a semester. It's usually about, just so you know, also, it's not every week that we go out as muses. We go out um, usually about five times a semester. And so over the year, there are about 10 different outings at night. And then there's a number during the day, during class time, right, where we may go to a museum or to a gallery or Chelsea or walk the High Line, et cetera. Um, So that's one way that we still connect. Um, Additionally, Um, I would underscore what Colin said, Um, we've been doing a lot of creative projects, um, having students work together in either partners or in groups um, to create work and to research together. And I will tell you that, um, well, it goes back to the evening outings um, after watching an opera the other night all together. So we you know, usually we go to the opera, but we watched an opera together with also with a music professor as a guest. Um, my students were cracking up at one point, you know, and when it was over, three or four of them came on the Zoom after everybody left after the discussion. They said, sorry, professor, I, we don't want you to think we were laughing, whatever, at you. They have a group chat, right? They are, they have their friends. They have made their friends during this crazy, right, crazy online world where they've pretty much never met each other physically this whole year. But yet from working on projects together, from, I don't know, various group chats, whatever. So I do believe, and I know it to be true, that um, there is still that opportunity to make connections, to make friendships, to have fun, um, even though we're in this crazy virtual world. And the last thing I'll say in the big Hunter picture is that we have something called the Office of the Arts, where we have cultural partnerships between Hunter and various New York City arts and cultural institutions, like museums, like theaters, like uh, dance venues, where you guys get free admission and tickets and internships and stuff like that. And we have an arts ambassador program, which is a volunteer program for students who um, do things together related to the arts. And that's, again, a general hunter thing, but muses are arts ambassadors. They're blogging um, on our special blog for um, the Office of the Arts. They're interviewing professionals in arts jobs. You know, we have panel discussions on careers in marketing. We have, you know, careers in art law, right? So we're we're always doing things to keep um, keep our students uh, connected. We have a Frick a a drawing session at the Frick Collection actually next Tuesday, which is online. But again, we're in community. We've got our sketchbooks and our pencils, and we're we're drawing together. So we're still we're still making art. We're still experiencing the art and we're looking forward to the city opening up more and more in this next year. 
So I'm very optimistic. Excellent. I'd love to add one more thing to that. Um, so as uh, Dr. Jimenez mentioned, sophomore, junior year, muses often end up mentoring the first year muses who come in. And we have scholar peer leaders who are kind of, you know, they're touching base with administration and staying involved. And Muse really serves as a platform to do really whatever you want. We have two scholar peer leaders who are really interested in how art and science connects and just in general. And they invited a professor and a TA in one of their courses to come do this panel discussion. And because they're Muses, they have access to the Muse newsletter, which we put out um, that you know reaches all the Muse students in the school, including some alumni. And also the Office of the Arts has a huge network throughout the school. So because of their connection to the Muse, they're able to formulate this event with the mentorship of uh, Dara and myself. And then we have this wide audience. So people will show up to their event, right? So it's just another platform to really like anything you're interested in, you can make it happen. And then we have connections for you and we can reach as many people in the school as you need. Excellent. I have I have a couple more questions if that's uh, if that's all right. I'm actually another uh, for uh, Dara, if possible. Um, what, what type of support is is offered for freshman scholars who want to apply for internships? Um, and what are some of the scholarships that um, that are available for? Um, I'm sorry, the internships that are available for Muse scholars. Yeah, we um, have a database of internships, um, most of them posted on the Office of the Arts website. Um, but additionally, we have uh, the newsletter, both the Muse, we call it the Muse in the newsletter, um, where we announce internships. The Office of the Arts announces internships every two weeks. Um, which is um, amazing. We have at least two or three that we highlight. Their projects, uh, internships right now open at Lincoln Center that my muses are applying for at um, the Guggenheim that they're applying for. Um, so we are, I mean, honestly, finger on the pulse of every single internship possible um, at Arts and Culture in New York City. And I'm gonna tell you a secret. Remember Hunter, as you, all very well know, right, is a public college, right? We're the City University of New York. And the reason that I'm at Hunter and I'm sure my colleagues are and my faculty colleagues as well, we're here because you guys, Hunter students are awesome, hardworking, hungry, right? Most of you are not coming from a privileged background, you wanna make it in New York City and, or in what, you know, wherever and in whatever field. And I'll tell you from the arts and culture point of view, my colleagues at these institutions, they come to us and offer, like I just got 400 students of Guggenheim internships out of five, they had five places they came to me first, they said, do you have Hunter students, you know, who would want whatever, that would be perfect for this. I was like, absolutely. So they want Hunter students. Honestly, they're, they're saying, we don't really want the Columbia University students or the NYU students. We want Hunter students. So to be very, very frank, it's, it's one of the things, one of my missions being at Hunter, now running three programs, including this news program, that I'm at Hunter to build the next um, leaders in arts and culture in New York City. And the new scholars are absolutely um, part of that future. So internships are us. That's great. And um, I mean, it's very true. I mean, the arts at Hunter, I mean, it's one of our biggest strengths. So it makes lots of sense. So yeah, thank you for mentioning that. So question for our students. This time around, I'm gonna start it off with Colin actually. Um, so why did you decide to attend Hunter? And uh, why uh, you scholars, I mean, I know why now they're listening, but I'd just love to hear from you, from, from you all. So start with Colin. Oh yeah, um, well, um, I decided, 
I, I'm not from New York City originally. I'm from Scranton, Pennsylvania. Um, and I decided to come to uh, CUNY in general, like City University in general, because um, the year before um, I had graduated high school, they announced the Excelsior grant. Um, so I was like, oh, cool, free college. And then I, I went to New York City. Um, and I believe when you apply for, for CUNY, you apply for all of them. But my top choice has always been Hunter because I've heard fantastic things about the theater department, which have all been true, by the way. Um, I've had very wonderful um, interactions with the theater department. Um, but beyond that, when I was doing my application, I also saw Muse. And you know the fact that it was a scholar program dedicated to the arts obviously fascinated me. And I was very, very excited that I was accepted. Excellent. Colin, Excellent. I still remember you in first year news class. I hope good things. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right, Ariel, I'd love to hear um, your perspective. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. To me, being a hunter was a total accident. I did not even know what I was doing. And I knew I wanted to be in New York City. And I knew I wanted to do something in the arts. And when I saw that Hunter had a muse program, I was like, oh, that sounds great. I'll just go to that. And um, I never visited. I just came. And after that, I mean, everything fell into place completely perfectly. Like I had no idea what incredible arts Hunter had. I totally blindly picked that. And I mean, I've never been disappointed. So it was a, a very happy accident. That's wonderful. And last but not least, Rosette. Um, I'm kind of the same way. I, I was kind of like, oh, it's like a 25 minute commute. Like I'll, I'll go there. Um, and then also with the Muse program, I, I, it made me pick a hunter over other communities because I was like, oh, I get to be part of this special scholar program, even though I wasn't sure what it was yet. I was like, it sounds nice. Like I'm going to do that. And I really like the arts. Um, and also what Colin mentioned, the Excelsior program, which I think if you're from New York, you should definitely apply to because it's really helpful. And it's it's been really helpful with kind of just taking the pressure off choosing classes. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Uh, looks like we may have one more question. Um, so it seems like a lot of our students that are in news uh, are visual arts or performing arts majors. Um, but uh, what if a student's interested in, in creative writing? Um, do you have many students who are creative writing majors who are uh, uh, Muse scholars? I'm gonna answer just to say yes. Yes, creative writing is one of the concentrations in our English department. And I've had and do have Hunter Muses who are majoring in creative writing, including Colin, who is here on this call. Um, so yes, we do consider creative writing a form of creative expression. Um, I definitely accepted some of you guys who applied saying that you were interested in becoming a writer. Um, so you don't just have to be interested in, in visual art or performing arts. In fact, next week in our Muse class, the freshman Muse class, we have um, playwrights coming in who are leading uh, two creative writing workshops with my students. Um, which we have done uh, over the last number of years. And some of the works that get written as a result of this workshop have been performed as spoken word, um, you know, performances at the showcase for students, or they've gone on to publish those um, pieces that they wrote just in the freshman, you know, class in, in a couple of workshops, or it just inspired in them the idea that they loved writing and that they wanted to try their hand uh, at becoming a writer. Uh, Colin, Colin, do you want to answer a little something about creative writing? Um, yes. Uh, well, as I, as I said, I'm a creative writing major. Um, and yet we have, um, I, I adore the English department. I really do. Uh, I, I think all of their um, because with English, because it has so many sub-concentrations, um, you have a general sort of course map and then specific things for your concentration. Uh, and I, I think a lot of the general stuff in the English department is very, very useful. Like I had to take theory classes um, and that has helped me be a better writer because I know how 
my work would be analyzed and I know how to bring theory into my work. Um, and there's also, if you don't, if you don't want to take theory, there's composition classes, which are obviously make you a better writer. There's um, a lot of survey classes. And I think the best way to become a better writer is to read. So uh, the English department's fantastic. Uh, and um, I, I, I know plenty of fantastic director, or fantastic uh, professors in the English department. Um, and uh, even more so specifically with creative writing. There's like Sarah Rempe, there's um, uh, Naomi Limesider. There's so many good professors in the English department. So yes, it's, it's a great program here. Excellent, excellent. Here's the final question of the day. Um, this is for Dara, but also uh, maybe Colin, you may wanna add some insight on this as well. Um, maybe your experience um, if possible. Um, first question is uh, um, how many muses are there um, and then the second part of that question is what is the community like for for out-of-state students okay so if you're asking how many muses i'm assuming you're asking freshmen sophomore junior seniors like yep. the entire cohort of muses at hunter i think is about 110 or 120 students at this point um we um, bring in approximately 30 students each freshman year, plus or minus. Um, so that's a small group, right? That's what we're talking about. This is a small community. And so as students graduate or spend, you know, get a BA, MA and are here for five years, right? We have approximately 110 or 20 students total over the four years. Um, and what was the second question? I'm sorry, I forgot. <laughs> no, no problem. Oh, uh, oh. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> no, I just didn't hear, sorry. Out of state. Oh, out of state, thank you. Um, and we definitely have out of state students every year. Um, right now I have students also from, who are in the freshman class from Pennsylvania, from um, California, from Florida. Right, so there's usually a handful of students in the freshman class who come from another state. Um, they tend to be students who dorm um, or find an apartment, you know, obviously nearby or somewhere so they can get to school. Um, but they immediately are, are drawn in um, like, you know, any other uh, new scholar. And Colin is uh, an example, Colin from Scranton. Right. So we, we welcome you from wherever you're from. We understand that New York City is the place to be an artist, to pursue your dreams. Um, and Hunter is one of you know, the greatest schools in which to pursue that. Uh, another set of off the record um, piece of info is that um, a number of our faculty, particularly adjunct faculty, are also teaching at NYU and at Fordham and other schools. So, you know, why pay $60,000 or whatever the numbers are um, to go there to have the same faculty and then to have this incredible student body um, that, you know, is, is, is working together to, to make the world uh, a better place which is our hunter motto is uh, the care of the future is mine. And we're trying to take care of it from the, from the art side, because we believe that art um, builds empathy and, and brings people together and makes the world a much better place. Absolutely. Colin, did you want to share anything about your experience as an, as an out-of-state student? Well, I'm technically an out-of-state student, but I'm also technically an in-state student because I moved uh, and got my year's residency before Excelsior. Congrats. Excellent, excellent. Well, um, it looks like we had some great questions and some great answers, uh, so thank you all. Uh, so first and foremost, I wanna thank everyone here who, um, who joined us. Uh, I'll start off with um, our staff, our students, and then our uh, prospective uh, muses. I hope you all liked what you heard today about the Muse Scholar Program and that it makes you want to join the Hunter Hawk family. 
I know I'm, I'm convinced after listening to everybody here. Um, we definitely encourage you to continue learning about us, about our programs, about the student life opportunities. Um, so don't forget to um, make sure you take a look at our admitted students page. It's, it's a great way for you to uh, see what's going on and um, post May 1st as well. Uh, so just three final reminders. Um, for students who are interested in housing, our Brook, Brookdale Residence Hall is open and live on the housing website. So make sure that you do submit your application for housing as soon as possible. Um, students who um, are priority applicants, meaning muses, um, should submit their application by April 12th for priority uh, review. Uh, so I just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, second thing I wanted to say is if you want to hear more from students and um, like whether it's our uh, scholar students, um, whether it's our general population and you want to ask them questions directly, you can definitely check out our um, admin student page and there's a chat with us option. And basically that takes you straight to be able to talk to students, which is great. Um, and last but certainly not least, um, if you've decided you're like, you know what, I know Hunter is the place for me. I think at this point, I think no brainer. <laughs> um, be sure to log into your CUNY first account. Um, that way you can accept your offer. You can submit your deposit um, by May 1st or before May 1st. Um, that way you can reserve your spot for the fall 2021 class. So uh, we definitely look forward to seeing you again and have a very, very wonderful day. Bye everyone.